Mm-hmm. Holy Watchman now! Huh? Today, we're gonna get into some ribs. And I ain't talking about no regular ribs. I'm talking about something well seasoned, full of flavor, extremely delicious, meat falling off the bone business. Yeah, that is what we're doing. We're doing that today. So we ain't even sticking. Let me get into this one thing. We're doing some baby back ribs. And the first order of business when preparing your ribs is you want to get it at room temperature. So if you had it in the freezer, if you had it in the fridge, Take it out, thaw it out, and let it come down to room temperature. The second order of business is removing our silver skin from the back of the ribs here. The silver skin is this membrane that goes along the back of the ribs that kind of holds the ribs together. Now this is, a, I guess, like a protective barrier, they could say, because once you keep this on, seasoning does not penetrate or will not penetrate the meat. And obviously, you don't want that to happen because we want full flavored ribs we want the seasoning to penetrate the meat, so we need to remove the silver skin. And it's quite simple. All we need is a butter knife like this. And what you wanna do is go in a couple ribs down from the edge and just slide the knife underneath the skin here. And then you wanna push it straight through. Now, sometimes this is an easy process, sometimes it's a little tricky, but just take your time and do it and just prise that up like so that and then once you have a grip on it here yeah start to tear like so that just got a firm grip on it and you keep tearing and just tear all that right off and just like that we have our silver skin removed from the back of the ribs and as I said this silver skin uh, prevents seasoning from penetrating the meat and we don't want that we want the meat to be penetrated by the seasoning, full flavor on the ribs. So, so for our spice rub for our ribs, I'm going in with a tablespoon of salt, tablespoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of paprika, tablespoon of jeera powder or cumin powder, teaspoon of chili powder, and a teaspoon of MSG. I'm gonna mix that together. All right, so that's it for our spice rub. So don't worry, I know in a lot of other recipes, you would see that they're using onion powder and garlic powder and that kind of thing. Don't worry, I have you covered. Let me get on to the next step. So for the next part of the process, I wanna lay some foil down. Gonna rest our ribs down. Now season with our spice blend. Rub that in. Make sure we get the other side, the meat side. And now for that rich Trini or Caribbean flavor, I'm gonna add some green seasoning to our ribs and that's where you'll get the flavors of the garlic, onion, pimento, herbs like shadow benny, saive and thyme all up in here. I'm going to rub this green seasoning in to the meat and in addition to the flavor that the green seasoning is going to lend to our ribs, the moisture as well is going to help keep the meat moist. As I say, we're going for a nice succulent ribs, meat falling off the bone kind of thing. So the little moisture from the green seasoning will definitely help with that. 
get some green seasoning on the back as well. And now I'm just gonna wrap it up in the foil. So for the first part of the cooking process for these ribs, I'm gonna place this into the oven preheated at 275 degrees and you're gonna let this cook for two hours. Nice and slow, we ain't rushing nothing. So for two hours and you'll check back in it and see how it going. All right, so while the ribs in the oven, let me get onto the barbecue sauce one time. Gonna let the butter melt and infuse that garlic flavor into the butter. Add in some tamarind or tamarind, but we just call it tamarind to the mix here. And this is gonna add some nice tart flavor, nice tartness to our sauce. Going in with a few tablespoons of tomato paste. Okay, that's our mix. Add in the rest of our spice blend. So that's about two tablespoons of the spice blend. Going in with two tablespoons of brown sugar. It's going to balance off some of the tartness from the tamarind and the tomato paste. Add in a quarter teaspoon of five spice powder. One tablespoon of soy sauce. Then a bit of water to the sauce because we want the tamarind to kind of cook and release its flavor into the sauce. So that's about a half cup of water there. Gonna give this a taste, make sure our flavors are well balanced. So I add in one more tablespoon of brown sugar to kind of mellow out some of the tamarind and tomato paste. Give that a taste again. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna let this come to a simmer and then we'll get back to it in a couple of minutes. All right, so I was a little too eager when I was placing the ribs on the rack because it's only afterwards I realized I have to uh, brush the underside first of the ribs before uh, flip it over because we want it to go meat side up in the oven when we put it back. So just applying our sauce to the underside of the ribs here. And I want to use the rack because the rack would allow the heat to pass through under the ribs and allow the sauce to stick to the ribs. All right, let me try and flip this without making a mess. All right, perfect. Going to apply our sauce liberally to the top side. This smelling so good eh? smelling so good the sauce sauce tasting real nice all right so the ribs properly well sauced down so i'm gonna crank the heat on the oven up to 400 degrees and i'm gonna put this in for about half an hour and we'll check on it then so while the ribs in the oven doing its thing I want to have a word with all you about this barbecue sauce. Now, making barbecue sauce from scratch is something I am no stranger to. I always like to make my barbecue sauce from scratch because that way I have full control over what it tastes like, you know? And I have to say, I think to date, this is one of the best homemade barbecue sauces or sauce that I've ever made. 
first things first, the butter inside of here, the butter doing everything. That butter adding a kind of luxuriousness to the sauce. So don't switch the butter out for like vegetable oil or olive oil or something like that. Use the butter. As a matter of fact, if you have um, beef tallow, which I do have, but I didn't use, you could use something like that as well, something with, full of flavor. Now. And then the tamron, tamarind, tamron that I use in there. Now, of course, fresh tamron is not the easiest thing to come across. So if you can't get the fresh tamron, I would say use tamron paste or a tamron ball. The only thing is when you're using something like that, like a tamron paste or a tamron chutney, um, or tambran ball is that you would have to adjust the other ingredients to suit because like a tambran ball would have the sugar in it, it will have pepper, it will have salt. So you would have to be mindful of that and kind of adjust and tweak the other ingredients that you add to suit and to balance off the flavors. Now the tartness of the tambran and the tartness of the tomato paste, well balanced with the brown sugar. The sugar just kind of mellow that out and then the five spice inside of there, the five spice powder, as well as the soy sauce, give it a bit of an Asian flair, an Asian little tinge to it, but still very barbecue-esque. And then of course, you know, bay leaf and ruku for that local flavor, you know, that trini flavor, you can't go wrong. So, this sauce I feel, I'll be using this sauce a lot in, uh, recipes going forward like a barbecue chicken or even a um, loaded hot dogs that I like to add that um, kind of soy sauce kind of thing I could swap out that for this barbecue sauce I feel it could be real best so ratings on this sauce ratings all right enough of me raving about this sauce the ribs in the oven gonna be coming out just now so coming back in a few all right so our ribs are out of the oven finally and I let it rest for about 20 minutes or so so it cooled down enough so I could handle it and now yeah it's just time to cut up these ribs so it's going in here just trying to find the bone hope I don't make a mess of this I'm cutting on the bone I'm trying to cut off the bone So look how we look in here. Tender, succulent, meat falling off the bone. You see how tender that is? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And let's go in and taste it one time. I'll get into the taste just now, right? Hold on. I'm gonna get into the taste just now. I really don't have no words, but I'll try to convert some words. The seasoning penetrate, get that green seasoning, the spice rub going straight through the meat, the whole thing flavorful. It's not just flavor on the outside, flavor right through the meat. Mm -hmm. You know how green seasoning does this? Flavor up everything, that is our local flavor. So you know the flavor is there in the ribs. And then our sauce, listen, as I told you before, the tambran, the five spice. That's the secret to this. It just give it so much more flavor. And then of course, bay leaf, ruku, soy sauce, tomato paste, plus the spice blend. Yeah. Yeah, it's not much words for this, you know. The only thing I can tell you is, you have to try this recipe. You have to try this. This, I mean, this is self praise, no recommendation but this is the best ribs I ever eat. I had to pat myself on the back. If my hand wasn't dirty, I had to reach around and pat myself on the back. This, real win. Real, real win. Flavor right down to the bone, you know? Flavor right down to the bone. So, if you like this recipe, please give the video a thumbs up, give it a share. If you try this recipe, listen, you had to try this recipe. You need to try this recipe. So if you try it, let me know what to know. Let me know what you like in this recipe. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to do so. Of course, you know, links to the recipe will be in the video description. So look out for that. And yeah, thanks for watching. 
and they are going to finish these ribs. Well, here now, first I'll rush in to finish this episode, I forget to mention one important detail. You would have noticed that the background music for this episode is different, and the music that was provided here was from a Regin Frost Blaze. He's a real talented local producer and artist, and if you want to check out more of his stuff like this mad thing that you're hearing right now, check the video description for the links provided. All right, with that one, I'm going to finish eating these ribs. See you all later.